Hi everybody, this is Bob from Wild West Guns, and I want to thank you for clicking on this video. Uh, I do apologize, it's been a while since I've uploaded anything. Uh, part of the reason for that is I don't want to just upload random videos for the sake of uploading a video. I want to make sure that I have an item that is interesting and unique and something different for people. Uh, so I think that I've got that today. Um, what I've got is an HK MP5. Uh, I guess more specifically, this is an SP-5, which is the civilian semi-automatic version. Uh, of course, a, a true MP-5 would be full auto. Uh, and this is kind of an iconic weapon. I'm sure many of you have seen this. You've seen it in movies, video games, Call of Duty, all that sort of thing. You're probably very familiar with this, but I know a lot of people uh, probably have not had an opportunity to get their hands on this and actually shoot it. Um, so I do want to thank uh, my buddy. This this gun belongs to one of my friends. He let me borrow it uh, for the purpose of making this video and getting a little range time in with it, uh, just because I did not have any experience with it myself. Um, why is this gun so iconic? Well, so this came out in the 1960s. I want to say mid-60s is when HK released this. Um, and it's been used all over the world by... British Special Forces, SWAT teams, like I said, it's very popular in movies. Um, one of the things that, that makes this gun sort of a, a premium product, besides the HK name on the side of it, is the Roller Delayed Blowback Operating System. And I'm not necessarily going to go into all the details of that, um, but Roller Delay is, is well known for a very smooth shooting light recoil impulse, uh, just a pleasant gun to shoot. And in the in the couple of mags that I've put through it so far, I have also found that to be true. Uh, we are gonna be doing some more shooting with this shortly, uh, get a little more hands-on experience, and then I'll kind of give a summary at the end. Um, but talking through this gun a little bit more, some of the features, uh, of course, this is a pistol in its current state. Uh, this is a brace. Uh, this is a little hard to operate with one hand, but folds up into a very nice compact package. This is an Aimpoint T2 optic. Uh, this is set up to co-witness. Of course, this has the traditional HK diopter sights on it. Um, as far as the, the ergonomics on here, I, I am a big fan of the safety. It is, it is ambi. You can see it on both sides there. And it's quite easy to manipulate with your thumb. Well, hard to do with one hand on camera. But it's pretty, pretty simple. I like that. Your mag release right here. Of course, the gun is cleared. I checked, that sa uh, checked it for safety before starting the video. Um, another feature that I'm a big fan of on the end of this from the factory, we have both a three lug adapter and a half 28 thread protector. So if you needed to mount a normal half 28, which is kind of your standard nine millimeter or AR, you just unscrew that. There's your threads. You've also got tri lug adapter on there. So I happen to have, this is my Omega 9K with a tri lug adapter. If you're not familiar with this setup, literally that easy, just kind of push it on, pull it off. Very simple. And I gotta say, I'm not an HK fanboy. I know that there are a lot of guys out there who know 10 times more about this gun than I ever will, and that's okay, but in this configuration, it's a really good-looking gun. That, that is hard to argue with. Um, it, it, you know, of course, it's made to have a suppressor on the end. Um, you know, as far as durability, reliability, you're not going to find anything better than this. I mean, this has been a well-proven gun for a long time. There, there's a reason that a lot of the top special forces and militaries and that sort of thing use this as, you know, one of their close-quarters weapons. Of course, this is a 9 millimeter. Um, the, the delayed blowback system was originally used by HK 
more on their, their G3s and their HK91s, which came out before this gun. Uh, they kind of adapted that same system into this smaller package. Um, so that being said, uh, one question I'm sure people will have, what's the price on these? Well, uh, they are not cheap. Um, unfortunately, like most HK products, uh, this is right around $3,000. Uh, there's not a lot of these getting imported. Now, there are a lot of clones out on the market. Uh, I don't have a lot of ex experience with the clones. Someday, I hope to get one of the clones in, and we can kind of do a side-by-side -side comparison at that point. Uh, but if you want a true HK, which this is, you're going to have to pay for it. So just know that. Um, I did do a little research as far as the pricing and the, the rarity of this type of gun. And there's a lot of different legal things as far as the imports and exports. Uh, you know, one of the common things on the internet is the reason these are so expensive is because you suck and HK hates you. Uh, that's not entirely true from what I have found. Uh, of course, these are made in Germany where HK is located. Uh, they have a lot of export restrictions on their end. And then, of course, we have a lot of import restrictions on our end. Um, so from what I was able to find, a lot of the... The rarity is not necessarily that HK is trying to screw over the civilian market, um, but there are a lot of legal reasons that things are the way they are. Um, that being said, we're going to go ahead and take this out to the range. I've already put a couple mags through it, but we're going to do a little more shooting, get a better feel for it, and then we will come back and do a final wrap up. Okay, we're out here on the range. Um, I did shoot this gun a little bit the other day. Uh, put a, just a couple mags through it. I'm going to shoot a little bit more, try to get a little better feel for everything, get a little more used to it. Uh, I don't know how much of this I will film. I'm just one guy in my backyard, so it's not super easy to film everything if I'm, if I'm moving and running and gunning and that sort of thing, um, but I'll do as much as I can here. Um, that being said, we, I am going to run it both suppressed and unsuppressed. I'm going to start out with the suppressor on it. Um, this is just normal blazer brass 115 grain uh, normal off-the-shelf 9mm ammo. It's not subsonic. And we're empty. Um, one thing, of course, a lot of the, the older guns do not have a last round bolt hold open. Uh, so that's just something you just got to live with on this. Uh, we're going to load another mag up and go again. Okay, first mag was good. Uh, I'm going to take some shots at the 50 yard gong. Uh, I think this optic is pretty well zeroed, so that, that shouldn't be a challenge. We'll, we'll see what happens. Uh, I also realized on the first mag I did not do the HK slap. Uh, so I'm going to correct that now. Better. <laughs> Took me a second to get my sight picture figured out, but I think we've got it now. She runs. Okay, we're back from the range, so I want to kind of go ahead and give a quick summary, kind of give my thoughts on this. Um, starting with the good, this gun is of course known for durability, reliability. It, it's been tested throughout the world in some harsh environments, and it's been a great performing gun for a long time. Uh, I saw nothing during my brief session with this to discredit any of that. As far as the shooting experience, it's top tier. The, the recoil is very light. It's, it's easy to handle. Um, it's a very pleasant shooting gun. Uh, now, there are some things I don't love, and, and maybe I'm nitpicking this gun a little bit in particular, as opposed to all MP5s. Um, of course, this one being a, a pistol in its current configuration, has the, the PDW style brace on the back. And, and this is not a, an inexpensive setup. I mean, this is a very nice 
sturdy. There's not a lot of wobble there at all. Um, but what happened to me, I had a very, really hard time getting a proper cheek weld on it. There's just not really any meat there. Now, is that something that could be corrected by turning this into an SBR and putting a proper stock on it? Uh, yeah, possibly, if you don't mind paying the extra 200 bucks and all that and engraving your name on the gun. Uh, you can certainly do that. Um, but another thing, just with this particular setup, the aim point right now is set up to co-witness with the iron sights. Um, for me, that results in me having to really turn my head sideways to get a proper sight picture. You know, a lot of the, the newer training methods are really trying to emphasize more upright head placement. Uh, you see on a lot of the newer ARs, the sights are, are getting lifted up a little bit so you can kind of stay upright. Uh, I can't do that at all with this current setup. Um, you know, I have to really turn my head instead of being here where I would like, I'm down here. Um, not a huge thing. I think it, they're correctable issues. Um, you know, and, and let's be honest, I don't know that anyone is necessarily looking to use one of these as their modern combat gun. Uh, you know, I know some people still do, but a lot of these are more of collector's items at this point as well. And, and that's okay. There's certainly a place for that. Um, overall thoughts on this, like I said, I, I thought the gun lived up to the hype as far as shootability, easy, easiness of, of handling. Um, you know, it's, it's a very, it's a pleasant gun. <laughs> There's really no other way to say it. it it's, it's nice to shoot. Um, I, I had no issues with reliability in the, the shooting that I did with it. Uh, do I think that it is still relevant today as it, as maybe it was 50 years ago? I don't know. Um, like I said, I, I think that there are some, some ergonomic things on here that are, that leave a little bit to be desired. I, I don't love, um, you've got a, you got a mag release here. Well, I can't reach it with this finger. Now, now full disclosure, you also have the duckbill mag release right there. So you have two options to do that. Um, but like this one, I can't touch that button without breaking my grip. Don't love that. Not a huge fan of the sight, sight picture. Or, you know, obviously this is just because of our dumb SBR laws in this country. Um, but all that being said, I, I like it. I think it's a great gun. Is it worth $3,000? That's for you to decide. If you're, if you're an HK guy, again, you probably know more about this gun than I do anyway. And that's great. Um, you know, and it may be to a lot of those guys. Uh, but if you're, if you're looking for something similar, there are a lot of clones out there as well that I'm sure offer a very similar, although it's not gonna say HK on the side of your gun, you know, you'll have a very similar shooting experience as well. Um, so that being said, I think that kind of wraps everything up. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this. If, if you did enjoy it, please hit that like button, subscribe, all that good stuff. Uh, I will try to make videos more frequently, um, but I also wanna make sure I have a, an interesting item that maybe you don't see every day, so I have something interesting to bring to you. So that being said, thanks for watching. Have a good one.